Now, worrying figures out this morning suggest the dementia crisis is far, far worse than we previously thought. The Alzheimer's Society says the number of people suffering from dementia in care homes is far greater than earlier estimates and fewer than half enjoy a good quality of life. When it comes to caring for the elderly, we have pretty low expectations. New research out today has found that 80% of residents in care homes have dementia problems, with less than half thinking that their loved ones have a good quality of life in those homes. And we're definitely not looking forward to becoming a resident in one, with 70% of us scared of going into a home ourselves, while almost two-thirds don't think the care sector is doing enough to tackle abuse. Well, in a moment, we're going to be talking to Kevin Waitley and Karen, who both know what it's like to have a mother suffering from dementia. But first, let's hear from Nick Dixon. He's in Winchester this morning. Good morning to you, Alan. You're just in time for breakfast being served here at St Catherine's. And Mary here has just been telling me everyone's had their hair done, especially uh, for this morning. Now, this particular care home was uh, purpose-built to look after people who are living with dementia. Uh, this is Anne-Marie, who's the, the manager here. Now, Anne-Marie, just uh, arriving here this morning, one thing really caught my eye, and that is the memory boxes on the walls outside everyone's uh, rooms. Explain what they're all about. Each resident has a memory box which is located next to the room and we encourage relatives to fill the memory box with personal possessions that are familiar to the resident. It not only triggers memories but it helps orientate the resident to their rooms. Okay. Now, as well as that, people watching this morning may well be facing the decision to put a loved one in a care home. What kind of questions should they be asking? Don't be afraid, afraid to ask as many questions as you can. I would advise people to visit as many homes as possible, go at varying times of the day, watch how staff are engaging with the residents and ask questions about staff training, activity provision and how things like privacy, dignity and independence are promoted. OK, really good advice. Thanks for joining us this morning, Anne-Marie. Alla Lorraine, back to you. Thank you Thank very you. much indeed. We're joining us now is Kevin Waitley, known to millions of course as Lewis, and Karen is here as well. And um, Karen, that home looked fantastic, didn't it? It looked really yes. good. I mean, that's the kind of place I love the idea of the memory boxes, mm -hmm. you know, the way that they've painted bright colours everywhere. If only they could all be like that. That's true. Um, our experience, we've had uh, the two contrasting experiences really. Our first experience with care homes was very negative actually and part of that was we were in denial about mum having a condition and she had to go into care in an emergency mm. um, and so we really had to take the first care home that would take her um, and that experience was terrible um, and it was only after the fact that we found that out. Right. When you say terrible in, in which... Um, staff morale was very low um, and and Consequently, the care given was really terrible and the owner of the care home used to come up from the south once a month, check his balance sheet and leave again. Um, so it was very much, th there wasn't the care that was needed, mm. you know, for the, for the residents at all. And, you know, whenever you would enter the care home, people would be trying to escape. Yeah. You know, my mum was quite successful on a number of occasions at escaping, but um, obviously that's not ideal. No, of course not. But you got her somewhere better? And then we, uh, we found um, the care home that she's in now um, is fantastic. So chalk and cheese, really. Mm. Um, and, you know, from the VT, things like, you know, there were sensory boards on the walls, mm -hmm. you know, sensory rooms. Um, they've really taken care to look at actually the residents' needs and, and who, 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 what, what their needs were. So it was a very different experience. Uh, Kevin, when did you first become aware that your mum had Alzheimer's? Then? In her mid 70s, which is probably uh, a good 10 years ago now, I'll admit, uh, we had exactly the same experience as, as Karen. Uh, by the time she had to go into a hole, it was, it was a crisis mum. She'd been sectioned. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't come down south where all her, all her kids were. Um, and not surprisingly, she wanted to stay in her own home where mm -hmm. she was, uh, which is the ideal. But um, too many people, I think, start looking for a care home once they're in crisis. And, and then, as Karen says, you're stuck. You're looking at mm -hmm. places and you think, this, this, this won't do. In, in our case, it was the North Tyne Valley and there was very little provision. There were only a couple of whole homes and, and no... She had to wait no, for a while, didn't she? A long time, yeah. And in the end, we had to bring her down to London to find a place. And you found the place, but at, at a cost, really, as well. They're, they're certainly expensive, as Karen says. Most of them are, are privately owned. And, and really, what we're asking today with this low expectations thing, the Alzheimer's Society, is for more joined-up thinking so that the social services and the government and, and the NHS 
and these private owners, most of them are privately owned, uh, get together and 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 raise the standard of these places every because they're absolutely get it all joined up. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. There, there are plenty of good places around that, that there should be a, a gold standard so that everybody can follow it, like uh, the place that Karen's found mm. and, and like a couple that I've seen this mm. year. There's a lot of university research being done recently in gerontology departments and what have you, and there's no excuse not to have uh, well-equipped. Yeah. Um, Homes, so you're not going to make those, a huge. Those little things, you know, make a difference. Like, like the memory box, like, yeah, like yeah. the bright colors, uh -huh. like singing. Yeah. Singing yeah. is fantastic. Mm. Music is like is music a great works thing. So, really well. Yeah, it's, it really it's, does. It, 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 the other thing is, we'd like the homes to be part of communities. You know, not yeah. stuck away yeah. somewhere Forgotten in almost. an old building. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm. because then you can attract good uh, workers in and volunteers because it's it's an attractive place to work. It's, it's it's as much about the the quality of life as the quality mm. of care. Because people mm. are scared, you know, people yeah. sitting now, yeah. they're frightened of going into care. Well, they see it as a, as a kind of some horrendous terminus that they're going yeah. there to die and it should be mm. going there to live. And there's a real onus on the care home owners to invest, you know, and to empower their staff also Absolute to feel good training, about yeah. their roles mm. because that's another thing that we really noticed in contrast from one care home to the other mm -hmm. is, is it's not a great sector you know there's an awful lot of negative media hype around you know this this all the terrible things that happen and the staff don't feel particularly empowered to be mm. part of the care sector no, and i think there's a proportion of them want to be trained don't they, they realize they haven't got the training to actually empower people to feel good about their jobs well, mm -hmm. well good on both of you for the work yeah. that you're doing and uh, thanks for joining thank us you. this morning thank, thank you so and we want to know uh, your experiences of care homes for a series starting next month here on daybreak if you've got a story you want to share with us you can email at daybreak um, and please include a contact phone number.